Over the weekend, there was a, a drone attack on an Iranian military facility, an interesting military facility in that this military facility is right in the smack of the center of, I think, a, I think it's a, 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 a big city in Iran, Isfahan. Isfahan, I think, is a, a, it has about 2 million people in it. It's a big city. Right smack in the middle of this city is a military uh, facility. Uh, it's a facility that, that supposedly is responsible for both research and development and building of uh, uh, b uh, missiles, uh, missiles uh, for the Iranian uh, military. Uh, these are missiles that uh, potentially could be targeted at, uh, at Israel. Glenn, thank you. Really appreciate the support. Uh, could be, that's $100 from Glenn. Uh, it could be uh, targeted at Israel, um, but these are awesome missiles that uh, there is some talk about the fact that these missiles might be uh, sold or given to the Russians uh, with regard to the war in Ukraine. Uh, the the uh, the attack is almost certainly um, was almost certainly the result of a um, of an Isra uh, of the Israeli uh, of the Israelis. Uh, almost certainly, this was uh, this was uh, an assault by the Israeli uh, intelligence. I assume the Mossad. Uh, it's interesting. The drones that attacked this facility, uh, the Iranians said they knocked them all down, but there was a large explosion in the middle of, uh, in the middle of, um, uh, large explosion in the middle of, what do you call it, in the is Israfan. So uh, it appears that they achieved uh, their target. Uh, these were done by quadcopters. These are, these are drones with the, with the, you know, uh, with four of these, uh, what do you call it, uh, like a helicopter. Um, there's no way I can. There's no way these drones could be launched from Israel, and 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 uh, travel the hundreds and hundreds of miles all the way to uh, Isfahan. Isfahan. Um, the, 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 you know, you could imagine they could be navigated by satellite, but it's it's hard to believe that they can um, they can go all the way. Propellers. Thank you, Rob. That's the word I was looking for. Propellers. Um, and um, it's. Uh, uh, so these, nobody's talking about this. I mean, in none of the stories I wrote, read, uh, they talked about this, but these must have been uh, likely uh, launched in, uh, in Iran by, uh, you know, Israeli operatives in Iran or, or maybe from, from neighboring uh, Iraq or, or some way neighboring, but almost certainly not for all the way, flown all the way from Israel. That would be, I think, impossible. Uh, it, so it is interesting. Uh, it's also true that this is not the first attack by drones on Iranian facilities uh, by what we believe is Israel. Uh, in, in August 2019, Israel sent an exploding quadcopter into the heart of a Hezbollah-dominated neighborhood in Beirut, um, Lebanon, uh, and uh, to destroy uh, a, a machinery vital for the production of precision missiles. So they literally brought it into a room and blew it up. I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, and that was in, in 2019. In June 2021, uh, quadcopters exploded at one of Iran's main manufacturing centers for centrifuges, uh, which purify uranium uh, at the country's two major uranium enrichment facilities. Uh, a year ago, six quadcopters exploded in another Iranian manufacturing and storage plant for military drones. So they were already attacking the Iranian capacity to produce drones, although it seems like they're still producing huge numbers of drones that are primarily going at this point to Russia. Um, and then in May 2022, a drone strike targeted a highly sensitive military site outside Tehran, where it is assumed Iran develops missiles, nuclear, and drone technology. So Israel has been using drones pretty regularly to uh, attack sites and targets within Iran. I mean, this is pretty cool. Um, you know, drone technology allows Israel to do this at relatively low risk. It doesn't involve uh, flying uh, jets into Iranian airspace, which is, again, hundreds and hundreds of miles away. You'd have to travel over Jordan, over Iraq, or over Saudi Arabia in order to get there. Uh, it's been done. Israel, of course, uh, bombed a nuclear facility outside of Baghdad, but uh, Iran is even further than that. 
uh, and uh, they would have to fly in some kind of stealth mode to avoid detection. It would be a very, very complicated operation to fly actual airplane in. Drones uh, allow them to use, I guess, local agents or local special forces units uh, in order to, to do all this stuff. And, um, and if you think about it from the perspective of special operations, when you think about it from the perspective of what is needed and the kind of intelligence that they have to have in order to launch this, it's pretty amazing. A lot of these installations, remember, are secret. A lot of these installations are not known. Um, uh, generally, the Iranians don't advertise it. The Israelis not only have the intelligence to know where these installations are and to know what exactly to attack, but they also have the intelligence and the resources and the personnel to actually be able to deploy within Iran and actually be able to destroy targets within Iran. All I can say is good for the Israelis um, in doing this. I think this is something the whole world benefits from. So the, I think the Ukrainians must be happy, but, uh, but mainly this is uh, an act of self-defense uh, def of Israel, Israel defending itself. I mean, if you consider this, plus all the attacks on Iranian targets in Syria, Israel is in an ongoing, sustained, nonstop war against uh, the Iranians on Iranian soil, on an any way Iran uh, sends its, uh, its troops, its military, and its equipment. Uh, and this is a way to just degrade the Iranian capacity for, for, for significant, um, for war uh, with Israel. So again, I think these are all um, pretty impressive from a military strategic intelligence perspective. And, and pretty important from a, uh, from a um, self-defense uh, perspective. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.